born David Henry Thoreau, was born on July 12, 1817 in Concord, Massachusetts. His parents were active in the community and his mother in particular worked on several social causes, including founding the Concord Women's Anti-Slavery Society. His family attended the First Parish Church of Concord faithfully. When he was 10, the congregation split between the Trinitarians and the Unitarians. His mother, being a free-thinking person, chose to go with the Unitarians. The Thoreau family was not wealthy and could only afford to send one of their sons to college, and they chose David. Of the brothers, he was the more serious learner. In keeping with true Unitarian fashion, David went to Harvard. While he was there, he was a quiet student who had to take time off in order to earn money for tuition. David turned toward teaching. After graduation, he continued to be teaching, but had a hard time finding a job. It was common practice at the time to hit misbehaving students, but he refused the practice. Eventually, he and his brother took over the Concord Academy. During this time, David became close friends with the Unitarian minister and writer, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and even lived with his family for a time. They were part of the Transcendentalist Club. Emerson encouraged him to write, and David changed his name from David Henry to Henry David. Henry began to write and edit the Transcendentalist magazine, The Dial. During this time, while always loving nature, Henry decided he wanted to devote himself to living in solitude in nature. He built a cabin for himself on the shores of Walden Pond on land owned by his friend Emerson. He lived in this self-made cabin in the woods for over two years, coming into town regularly though for supplies and to visit with family and friends. It should also be noted that his mother and sisters were frequent visitors to his cabin, bringing him food and clean clothes. While living in the woods, he did not pay taxes. Henry was against many things that the government was engaging in at the time, including the, a war with Mexico and slavery. He told the tax collector that he was not gonna pay. Do you know what the tax collector did? He threw him in jail. Now. He was only in jail for a night because his aunt insisted on bailing him out. But from that night, he wrote one of his most famous lectures, Resistance to Civil Government. After his death, the lecture was retitled Civil Disobedience. Henry believed, like all of the transcendentalists at the time, that there was a higher law than civil law and that it was a person's duty to follow their conscience. Unjust laws exist. Shall we be content to pay them or shall we endeavor to amend them and obey them until we have succeeded or shall we transgress them at once? When a law was unjust, Henry believed it was a person's responsibility to break the law. Henry continued to write and speak in the anti-slavery movement and especially in opposition to the Fugitive Slave Act in 1851. Henry kept several journals, uh, often writing about nature surrounding him by the pond. Now, this led him to writing two different books, Faith and Seed and Wild Fruits. Quote, I wish to speak a word for nature, for absolute freedom in wilderness as contrasted with a freedom and culture merely civil, to regard a man as an inhabitant or a part and parcel of nature rather than a member of society. Henry is considered one of the first people to write about the environment in such a way. Throughout his life, Henry evaluated his relationship to the Unitarian Church. While he was raised Unitarian, as an adult, he said, what in other men is religion is in me a love of nature. As often said in his writings, he found the divine not in a church pew, but in nature. 
As years have gone on, I would say several Unitarian Universalists would agree with him. In 1860, Henry developed a severe cold which turned into bronchitis and then turned into tuberculosis. The last two years of his life were spent ill, surrounded by his friends and family in Concord in his lifetime home. Henry David Thoreau died on May 6th in 1862. He is remembered as an activist, a writer, a poet, a spiritual seeker that inspires many UUs today. <laughs> <laughs>